right, I'm just going to get uh, my screen set up in front of me. Uh, my name's Rob Cameron. I'm an advisor with Collins SBA, and we've been working closely with the Tasmanian Hospitality Association to provide guidance uh, to hospitality venues around Tasmania to support the industry in whatever way we can to navigate through the COVID-19 shutdown. Uh, the shutdown has been brutal, um, but perhaps more of a concern is the reopening and what the, what's the world going to look like as restrictions begin to come off the industry? Um, how's the world going to be changing for uh, the customers that we're dealing with? Uh, how are suppliers going to change? And what sort of uh, other um, controls are going to be required in the business to manage a, a new COVID world? Uh, I wouldn't put myself out there as a hospitality expert, but uh, the work we've been doing with the THA and its members has brought us in contact with literally hundreds of Tassie venue operators, which has given us a little bit of insight into what's going on in the industry and the impact that that's uh, potentially going to have when we reopen. In general, we've noticed three groups of hospitality operators. Um, the first group is, is what we've described as fragile. So they weren't really making money going into this crisis and life is only gonna get harder for them um, as we go through to the other side. Then there's, there's probably the middle majority, which were heavily based on uh, local trade uh, they were profitable going into this crisis, but obviously um, they've really been knocked around and we've got to find ways to uh, recover from this uh, as quickly as we can and get back to uh, a sustainable business model. The third group uh, that we've been noticing are, are really the high end um, uh, of the market, probably quite reliant on a tourist trade and you know, chances are their market is going to be significantly diminished, um, if not uh, gone altogether for at least some period of time. And we've already seen the impact of that hit the industry with a you know a couple of high-profile names um, uh, being uh, closing their doors. Um, you know, this webinar content that I'm going to go through today is primarily focused on that middle group and what's required to thrive as we come out the back of, uh, of, of this um, COVID uh, shutdown. We've made some observations in speaking to the members that we've been talking to, which has given, it's given us a view um, as to what's going to be important in the hospitality industry and you know, as restrictions begin to lift, and that's really the focus of today's webinar. Um, so we've got one hour of covering what we see as being the key topics influencing success in the industry right now. Um, so look, I'm gonna um, get started on the, the presentation we've put together here. If you've got any questions as we go, don't hesitate to um, put some notes in the, um, Probably the, the question and answer section is going to be the easiest way for me to pick it up. And look, I'll do my best to, um, to cover any questions that might come up. All right, I'll get my screen up here. So after this webinar, if you think there's some value in what we've been talking about, we're gonna invite you to join a coaching group, um, which is gonna allow you to collaborate with others in the industry to work more deeply on the topics we're covering today. Um, the group coaching format um, is going to have expert presenters uh, who are gonna bring their expertise in certain areas, um, you know, whether that be um, 
technology or marketing and what that means for the Tassie hospitality industry. So be very useful uh, to tap into their brains and, and what that might mean for your business. It's going to be a group coaching format online. Uh, so we're going to use Zoom as you know, similar to today, but with more interaction, which is going to give you a good chance to collaborate with others in the industry. So we're going to try and um, facilitate discussion and uh, comparing notes with, um, with others in the industry as to what's working and what's not working. We're also going to group it so that cafes and restaurants will be together pubs and hotels together and accommodation as another group. Um, and we're going to try and keep the group numbers fairly limited. Um, you know, we're aiming for around, you know, hopefully a maximum of around 12, um, maybe a couple more given the way demand's going. But again, trying to keep it uh, fairly tight so there's a lot, of, um, a lot of opportunity to talk. And I guess the other thing we're very big on at Collins SBA is that to be successful in business, you know, it's critical that you've got a good plan. Um, and we do a lot of work around planning for businesses and, and helping businesses get a plan that's going to see them succeed. But equally important is having the right mindset. So that's something we're going to cover off, certainly through our coaching. I'll touch on it again today. Um, but at the end of the day, there's one thing we can't control, and that's the action. It's, it's really not about knowing in this... Um, in this material, it's about the doing. So that's why we're encouraging you to engage in a, in a coaching program because today I'm, I'm gonna give you some content, but at the, at the end of the day, when, when you walk away, we, we need to see action if you're gonna see your business succeed. So um, just a very quick plug there on our coaching program. Again, I'll touch on it at the end. Um, but, but I really feel as though that's an important way to help a lot of business owners, um, you know, get the support they need to, to take the right actions and be successful as we come out the other side of um, this COVID restrictions. All right, a little bit on the program, uh, what we're going to cover in our group coaching and also, you know, the, the content I'm going to touch, touch on today. The first one is making your business work. And really what we're talking about there is making use of a business model. So being clear on you know, how your business is going to make money and what that looks like in numbers, um, but also a cash flow forecast tool. Because it's no good making money if you run out of cash. So um, that's gonna be critically important going forward. And again, we'll touch on some of that content in a minute. Secondly, customer first thinking. So a big part of what we're going to talk about is brand and why that's so important for hospitality businesses um, coming out of these restrictions. The third thing we're touching on is digital. So what's, what's the technology that you need to make your business as efficient and as customer centric as possible? And it's quite, it's quite mind-blowing how quickly this space is moving in hospitality um, and how important it is to try and, uh, try and keep up with it. The fourth thing, which is, I guess, an all-time favourite in business, leading and managing people. Um, and, and what we're going to leave you with there is three ways to make sure you get the best from your team. The fifth one is really that mindset piece. We, we call it thinking into results. Um, and specifically, you know, one of our expert presenters will be coming in on this in the coaching program and talking about how to overcome the knowing doing gap. So it's all well and good to know what you need to do, but how do you, how do you then do it and, and why, what stops you from doing it? And the last one we talk about is traction. Um, and that's really about having a completed business plan and having the key things in place that are going to help you execute on whatever that plan is. Um, so they're, they're the key topics we're going to cover today and I'll take you through some of, the, uh, some of the content. Again, if you've got questions as we go, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box and I'll get back to you um, as soon as I can on that. So the first one I'm going to touch on is a business model. And this is, uh, this is a big one for me. 
because I see a lot of people with good business ideas that don't know how to make sure uh, they're making money out of them. And, and part of that is not really understanding the important numbers that you need to get right to make the business work. I'm going to show you a very simple example um, today. And this is a very basic uh, profit and loss account, I guess you'd call it. Um, and the first two lines is the average number of customer transactions. And I've called it 1,865. And the average transaction value. And we're saying on average, a customer spends $8.53 every time they do a transaction in this business. Now, this is not too dissimilar to a cafe operator I worked with a couple of years ago, which meant on average, their weekly takings were around about $16,000. So it was, a, it was a decent little cafe, um, which meant annually their revenue was around $827,000. Now their cost of goods, so their, their food and their coffee and all of that good stuff, usually came in somewhere around 32% of their revenue, um, which gave them a gross profit of 562,000. Then they had a couple of costs, uh, specifically they had their employment costs, which were in this example about 230,000. And they had some other fixed costs, rent and um, uh, insurances and all, all the other bits and pieces that go into running a business of about 200,000, which meant the owner walked away at the end of the year with a profit of around about $120,000. So this, this worked all right with him. And um, he came to see me the other week um, asking about reopening after COVID and what that was going to look like. And we ran a couple of basic numbers for him and we said, well, what would happen if we had 15% less customers coming into the business? Would, would, what, would it still make sense to, to run this business? And when we ran the numbers on it, we dropped the average weekly customer transactions from 1865 to 15.85, so that's a drop of 15%. And assuming nothing else changed, we just lost 15% of customers, his take home at the end of the year would drop from $120,000 to $38,000. So at this point, you can imagine he became pretty nervous. Um, so that, that was a 15% drop in customers. Now, not every business is going to respond the same way, which is why, why it's important for you to have your own basic model to understand how your business is going to get impacted in a range of scenarios. We then ask the question, what if those customers that were coming spent 5% less? So instead of coming in and spending an average of $8.53, let's say you know, a few of them are a bit worried about their jobs and maybe, um, uh, maybe the partner's out of work or um, you know, they've, they've held off on some of their mortgage payments and now they've got to, got to um, start paying it off a little bit quicker. So they, they don't buy that, uh, that bagel every second day and um, they try and cut back a little bit. So on average, our spending goes from $8.53 to $8.10. Well, now we're down to $15,000. Um, and this is where I think coming out of COVID, it's gonna be important for each business owner to have their own view as to what their business is gonna look like as they come out, of, um, come out of COVID. So again, if you'd like to um, get involved in our coaching program, we're, gonna, we're going to help you build a business model of your business in terms of what it looks like now or, or perhaps before COVID and what will it need to look like. So in the example of this cafe owner, 
what we might have to do if we think there are going to be 15% less, less customers and potentially they're spending less is alter the cost base of the business. So that, that might be a discussion with the landlord about trying to get the rent down for a period of time. Uh, it might be a reduction in hours worked of some of the casuals. Um, it might be a change in the menu to get the cost of goods down. Um, all, all sorts of things might, might have to be done to this business to see if we can bring that profitability back up. And, you know, I guess this is the real question behind a business model is how do you bring those numbers to life through brand, technology, people and leadership? And again, that's what we're going to cover in the rest of this webinar. We're going to start having a look at some of those key areas. Um, but I'd certainly encourage you, if you don't already understand your business model, that you, um, you begin giving that some thought to, to know what's that going to look like post COVID for you. The other important thing is cash flow forecasting. So how much cash do you have now? What do you think is going to be coming in month by month and what's going out? And, you know, together with a business model, um, you're going to have a financial plan for growing your bank balance, which is really at the end of the day, what we're in business for. Um, we've, got to, we've got to see bank balances growing so we can invest back in the business, provide a, a fair return for the blood, sweat and tears that go into building a business. Um, and those two tools are really important um, as we try and navigate our way out of the, the COVID crisis. The forecast tool is also going to, I guess, form a, the foundation um, as we work through the coaching program. Um, we're going to work with you to build out your own forecast over, over the six sessions. And, um, and again, you know, try and give you the confidence um, that when you're ready to, to reopen your business, you, you know the changes you need to make to make it work financially. So re really important couple of topics there. The second important thing to getting your business back to where it, where it needs to be is your brand. Now, branding is, is a long-term exercise. It's not something you can quickly change overnight, um, but it, it's going to be one of your key weapons to drawing customers. And arguably, a brand is the most valuable asset you're going to have. And it's something you won't see on your financials. What I'm showing up here on the screen is the tangible asset percentage um, of, of all assets in a business. Uh, and what we're seeing is that more and more of the value in a business is actually intangible things. So it's got nothing to do um, with the fit out that you've paid a lot of money for. Um, it's got nothing to do with that new coffee machine that you've you've paid fifteen thousand dollars for. Um, whilst all that that stuff uh, has value, it's not the most valuable thing. The most valuable thing is the brand that attracts the customers into your business. One of the challenges is how do you make an impact with your brand? And you know, one of the things. I guess uh, we've noticed as we've been talking to hospitality owners in the industry and looking at who's been successful and who isn't, um, it comes down to this concept of difference. And as humans, we're hardwired to notice what's different. Um, and I'd ask you here, what's, what's the first thing you see on this slide? And I'm guessing you're not going to see, say, oh, it's the, uh, it's the black star in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, obviously, it's the red star. It stands out. We're programmed to pick, pick it up. And that's how you, you need to um, be thinking about your brand. One of the questions we'd encourage you to think about is working out what 
what is that point of difference for your business and how clearly can you communicate that to your customers, your staff and other key stakeholders? And here's a simple one. My business is the only cafe, restaurant that what? What, what is it for your business? So if you, if you walk away from today's webinar and that's the only thing you've taken away from this, then you've, you've got something useful. So I'd encourage you just to, just to ponder that one for a minute. So again, brand is, um, is potentially the most valuable asset you've got. Um, and if you can answer these questions, you're gonna go a long way to be able to have a brand that will attract customers. Yeah, it's not easy, and that's where I'd suggest you get some expert assistance. All right, the next thing I'm gonna to touch on is technology. Um, and if there's one thing that COVID-19 has woken us all up to, whatever industry you're in, it's the importance of technology. It's moving incredibly fast and hospitality is no different in that regard. It very much separates the successful from the unsuccessful. And certainly, uh, I guess the, the experience that we've had talking to hospitality venues is that the ones that have been able to maintain some profitability and a degree of success through, through these restrictions have largely been the ones who have invested in technology um, well before COVID-19 hit. Now, if you're not up to speed on your technology, I recommend you start now. As I say, you know, the best time to plant a tree was probably 40 years ago. The second best time is now. So, um, so um, really important to begin to answer a couple of quick key questions. And the first one is understanding what's out there now. Um, and that's in terms of, you know, whether it's the financial side, uh, managing your workforce, whether it's engaging with your customers, um, whether it's um, point of sale systems, all of, all of those different applications are available and there's all sorts of uh, different varieties of those. Um, perhaps the more important question is then what's the right fit for your business? Uh, and that's about trying to understand the solutions you're trying to off, offer for your clients. Um, and how do you execute on that technology effectively? So how do you make sure you've got the right support to um, ensure that that technology gets implemented uh, without disrupting your business too much? But also you've got the right risk management um, for, for example, if, um, if the internet goes down and you're heavily reliant on uh, online orders, do you have a backup plan? So a couple of really critical things there. Um, you know, where it's becoming critically important is, first of all, there's a big efficiency question. If you can get your point of sale system um, efficiently talking right through to your financial software, um, and at the same time capturing data on your customers and clients, then you're going to be um, saving yourself an awful lot of time and headache um, by adopting best practice. The other thing that's becoming more and more interesting is that concept of owning the customer. And what we've seen during the COVID-19 shutdown is um, there has been a move towards uh, different platforms such as, um, you know, I'll use the Uber Eats example, uh, whereby customers are actually ordering through a third party business who then pass the order to you. In that scenario, who, who does the customer actually have the loyalty to? 
And you may well not have any data on that customer in the future, which can present problems if you're getting to a point where you're trying to understand your customer's buying patterns better um, and you're looking for some data to help support that. Uh, or if you are trying to, um, if you're trying to communicate to your customers in a situation where uh, perhaps something's gone wrong in your business and you're trying to reach out to them as quickly as you can, if all that uh, email addresses and phone numbers are stored by a third party um, app, you're going to really struggle to maintain that communication with your customers. The other example is if you're trying to offer a special deal um, and you want to get that information out to your customers, but you find that you don't have the data. Uh, you don't have the email addresses, you don't have the phone numbers, um, it can make it incredibly difficult in that situation. I was um, informed uh, a couple of days ago about uh, a business, uh, local business in fact, that was looking to tap into the fact that a hotel was located nearby. The hotel didn't want to offer um, in-house room service. Uh, so they're negotiating a partnership with the restaurant um, a couple of doors down the road to manage all of the in-room ordering. And I can show you a, a brief example here of, I guess, how that came about. Um, and here's, here's an example of a business in Sydney that's doing a similar exercise. Um, but all of all of their technology stack is set up so that um, customers in the hotel can go in here, put their orders in um, fairly simply, and it gets delivered directly to the room um, that they're staying in in the hotel. So really smart use of technology, which has opened up a whole new market to them that they, um, they otherwise wouldn't necessarily have got if they were just hoping that um, people would walk out of the hotel and, um, and uh, head, down to, head down to the restaurant. So, you know, the, the interesting thing here is the opportunities for new markets that technology can open up. So, again, would certainly, um, certainly encourage you to um, explore some of these options when it comes time to uh, re-establish your business and get the most out of your business uh, coming out of COVID-19. The next one here is about leading and managing people. Um, I guess what we've touched on here is a couple of key points that we feel are important when you're trying to get the best out of your out of your team. The first one is having the right structure. So what, what are the right roles and responsibilities for your business so that you make sure everything is covered off that needs to be covered off and it's very clear who is responsible for doing the various tasks within the business. You know, as we touched on, this may require business models to change. So you may, you may have to adjust the way you operate, um, the responsibilities that different people hold within your business, um, and how many people you employ, or at least how many hours you employ them for. So uh, it's one of the first questions you'll need to be answering as you come out of the, um, out of the COVID-19 restrictions is what, what does that look like for your business? The second thing that is really well done in the more successful businesses is a communication rhythm. Um, and that's really about what do we communicate? When do we communicate? 
who do we communicate with and how do we communicate with them? Um, so what we've talked about here is, is a, a level 10 agenda, which means um, every time we hold a meeting with our team, um, we've got a, a series of points that we cover off. And that gives us time to, first of all, touch on the goals that we're trying to accomplish and make sure everyone's clear on what we're doing and by when, but also sets aside some time for solving issues, raising problems and solving issues. Where we see problems in business fester is usually where there's no forum for airing the issues and being able to address them in a productive and healthy way. So having a good agenda to your meetings um, will really allow that to happen. The second thing is having a regular pattern of communication. So, you know, the, the exact right pattern will depend um, on your business. I've given some examples here as to, you know, do, do you communicate at the start of each shift? Do you communicate once a day? Do you communicate once a week? Um, do you have monthly meetings? And do you have quarterly meetings? Now, some or all of these may be appropriate, but the key thing is that you're doing them systematically. So it's not just, oh yeah, when I remember, I'll get around to it or, um, you know, maybe if we have a quiet day, I'll remember to talk to my team. Um, but that it's actively scheduled in um, to make sure that the communication is happening effectively. The other question is who's involved? So obviously here you've got to balance the amount of time involved in having meetings versus the information that's conveyed. Um, and how do we have our meetings? So. I guess the, the typical way is to bring people together in person, um, but you may find it's appropriate from time to time to, you know, you could potentially hold a, hold a meeting over Zoom or something these days. Um, so understanding, well, what is the appropriate forum for these meetings? Um, and maybe it's, it's once a quarter or even, you know, once, once, once or twice a year, that you get your whole team together. Um, you know, potentially they don't cross paths a lot if you're, if you're running a fragmented shift and you give them a big picture update as to what's happening in the business and where it's going. So um, having a good communication rhythm is a really powerful way to get the best out of your team. The other thing we talk about um, in leading and managing people, processes. So what is the way that we do things around here and ensuring people are following that consistently. And that links in very closely with training. So it's all well and good to have a process. This is the way we do things around here. Um, but if people don't have the skills to do it because they haven't been trained properly, then that's something you need to address as a business owner. Um, and one of, the, one of the tools that uh, we use fairly regularly is a skills gap matrix which is, I guess, a, a basic table showing a list of all the skills that you're requiring from people, um, a list of your team members, and then just identifying who, who is missing what skill. And off the back of that, you can, you can schedule in some training to um, bit by bit be able to cover off on those skills gaps. So um, really important part of um, getting the best out of people. Next thing we touch on is thinking into results, which is really the mindset piece. Um, and what, what we're particularly looking to cover here is how you shift your mindset to opportunities. Again, this has been one of our observations talking to lots of business owners in the hospitality industry. Um, there's certainly one group that have been very doom and gloom and um, really unsure what they're going to do when government handouts begin to wind back. Um, the reality is everyone has ended up in this COVID-19 situation um, with nothing to do with anything they've done wrong. 
but we've got to face up to the reality we're in and begin to look at what opportunities are opening up. You know, there's no doubt that I guess the, the thinking that you were using before COVID-19 is not going to be the same thinking that you're going to have to have to build a new model for your business to be successful going forward. So really important to look at how you can, how you can channel your thoughts to focus on the opportunities that are out there. Sometimes we're going to be stuck in a pattern of thoughts. So it's also important that you find ways to get unstuck in, in that thinking. Um, and again, it's about moving away from all the problems that you might have in a business towards what might be some of the solutions that um, are going to fix the issues that my business have. And again, if you're using a business model, a cash flow forecast, um, you've thought about your brand and your technology, um, you're looking at your people and getting the right people structure in place, I have no doubt you'll begin to identify opportunities to improve your business. Um, and you can begin to focus on action that is going to be positive in terms of getting your business um, moving forward. The next issue you're going to come across is quite likely what we refer to as the knowing doing gap. Often we know what we need to do, but we struggle to take action. Um, and that is the gap. Uh, so getting some tools to move us from knowing what we need to do to doing can be really helpful. And again, this is where we're going to bring in an expert speaker. Uh, we use uh, Rachel Downey um, in this area, and she's got some really good tools and skills to help us cross that gap. Um, and you know, again, if you if you, there are a number of um, people out there with skills to to help in this area, and it's really worth uh, looking at. You know, if you if you're not feeling positive about your business and you've got concerns. Um, starting with getting the right mindset can be a really powerful way to begin taking the steps you need to move, move forward. Quite often it's, um, it's habits, beliefs and behaviours that are either helping or hindering us at the moment. Um, so we've, we've got to understand why we think the way we do. And again, you know, how do we start setting some goals that will, um, that will encourage us to you know, start taking those first steps um, to, to make changes to our business um, and find a way to create a profitable business model that's going to work. The last area that we touch on is what we call traction which is really about how do, we, how do we action all our plans. It obviously ties in a lot with the mindset that we've just, uh, we've just talked about. Um, and one of the most important tools we can have is a business plan. And when I talk about a business plan, I'm not necessarily talking about a 20 page document that you might put together when you're needing bank funding. It could be as simple as a, as a one page um, with a list of actions that need to be done. Um, it can start very simple. Um, and again, if, you, if you're thinking about your business model and what are the numbers that you need to hit to make this business work, um, if you are thinking about uh, your technology, if you're thinking about your brand, um, you're going to come up with, with a big list of actions um, and that can form the basis of your business plan. The other thing we talked about was the cash flow plan and how you assign accountability for making that cash flow plan work for you. Um, we're very big on reporting, ideally on a monthly basis. So, you know, monitoring progress um, around monthly reporting is um, 
uh, is a really helpful way to keep you on track and certainly identify uh, whether there are any early warning issues that you need to be um, addressing. Um, and uh, I guess the other important thing there is, is potentially tracking some performance indicators as well as the financials. So that might be as simple as, you know, how many transactions have we done for the week and what was the average transaction value? So looking at a, a couple of those uh, key metrics on a regular basis will soon tell you whether you're on or off track in terms of your business making money and being successful. So that, that's the six content areas that we've identified as being really important um, as, we, as we reopen and ramp up business after COVID-19. Um, and again, we're setting up a, a, a coaching program to provide some support um, and some uh, linking between different people in the industry to share ideas and work on our businesses together so that um, we've got the best chance of being successful as we come out the other side of COVID-19. Um, I noticed there was a, a question here, is this more aimed at a town cafe rather than a small country town? And the answer to that is no. Um, the reality is that the principles we're talking about here can be applied to any size business. So, you know, if we talk about having a business model and a cash flow plan, um, you can absolutely apply that for um, you know, a, a very small business. Um, and in fact, it's easier to do for a small business right through to a very large and complicated business. Um, the other thing you know, to consider here is technology. Um, and arguably technology you know, is just as important in a, in a tiny micro business as it is in a large business. Um, so yeah, definitely no differences there. Branding is just as critical in a small business as a large business. Um, arguably it's more important in a small business. And the same goes with people. Um, people are important to every business, getting the right people in the right roles and getting them skilled up to the, to the right degree um, and, and getting them reflecting your brand, all really important things in both large and small businesses. So hopefully that answers your question there, Rachel, around, um, uh, I guess, the, the larger versus the smaller businesses. Um, definitely things... To, to consider across both. So I guess as we take people through the coaching program, um, you know, a couple of the, the key things we want you to come away with, um, obviously there's gonna be content that we're going to be going through and I've given you a high level picture of the content that we're covering in the coaching program here. Um, we're going to have a very much a focus on action. So actually, you know, building a plan throughout the sessions so you've got something to, to come away with. But importantly, you know, I've, I've used the phrase here, new industry allies. So knowing some other people in the industry who, you know, hopefully have similar businesses to you. Like I say, we're gonna to look to group them as effectively as we can. And, um, you know, that, that gives you a network of people you can go to to say, hey, how did you solve this problem? Or are, are you noticing this issue in your business and what are you doing about it? Um, and I think, you know, our experience tells us that's a really valuable thing to, to build um, for business owners who can sometimes feel quite alone in what they're doing. Um, the second thing is access to the experts. Like I say, we're going to have some... Um, some experts on brand, on technology, on um, people, and um, you know certainly there's a lot of work around the mindset side of things that I think you'll get a lot of value from if you join us. Um, and there will also be one-on-one -on -one support available as a follow-up if anyone needs it. So that'll be an additional engagement, but um, it's good to know what support is available after the coaching if you need some one-on-one -on -one 
direct support from any of those experts that, um, that are running the coaching program. All right, so as a next step from here, the THA is going to be contacting everyone over the next few days to get your feedback and they're going to offer you a spot in the group coaching workshops. The format is two hours a week over six weeks and um, the government's provided some funding to the industry for this, so it'll be no cost to you. Um, if you'd like to contact uh, myself or my colleague, Mike Dennehy, I've just dropped our emails on there. We're happy to answer any questions there. Um, and really, you know, again, our, our mission here is to try and equip hospitality businesses with the tools and the networks and the mindset to come out of this COVID shutdown um, as effectively as we can. You know, as I touched on, we, we, had the, um, we had the privilege of being able to speak to hundreds of hospitality operators as we've been going through the COVID crisis, trying to offer some support around financial management, access to government grants and, uh, and any other support we're able to offer. And what we've been finding really interesting is the common themes in the businesses that were, um, that, that were able to um, you know, hold some sort of level of profitability and have a degree of confidence um, about reopening after COVID. So hopefully we can share those lessons with you in a, in a useful format. Um, and again, I think a big part of the power of this sort of format is the links that you make with other group members. So certainly see that as a, as a massive value add, um, as well as obviously the, the expertise um, in a couple of key content areas and being able to really um, tap into some, some people who are experts in, in certain fields that you can then take back and apply to your business and give you the confidence to, um, uh, to operate as we come out of these COVID restrictions. So look, I think that's all uh, from me at this stage around the content. Um, look, I'll stay online for a few more minutes and just take any further questions that come through. Um, I noticed there was a question there from Frida around a makers group. Um, Frida, you'll have to excuse my ignorance. I don't actually know what a makers group is. So if you want to elaborate on that question a bit, I'm happy to um, happy to see if I can uh, help answer that. Um, and our oh, producers. Yeah, so we don't specifically have a producers group, Frida. Um, but if you would like to drop me an email or get in touch with me via the THA, I can certainly, certainly happy to have a discussion with you and see if we can find a program that might be suitable for what you're doing. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, we've got our email there up on the screen or go via the Hospitality Association and i um, happy to see... Um, see how we can how we can find a program that's going to going to fit you okay so look if there's um if there's no other questions still coming through actually i've got another one here from rachel um rachel you're waiting on funding from the government and it's hard to be focused when no one can tell you when funding will arrive I completely understand where you're coming from there, Rachel. Um, it, it has been an incredibly tough period and uh, a lot of businesses are, you know, running out of cash incredibly quickly and are looking at some of those government support packages as a really important way to help get you through to the point where you can begin trading again. Um, Look, without knowing specifically what government grant you're talking about, I obviously can't give you any specific feedback other than to say, um, uh, look, 
I, I guess you can only control what you can control. Um, what we'd encourage you to do while you're waiting for that money is try and put your mind um, to the most productive use you can around how do you design your business to be successful um, as trading recommences. Um, you know, again, that, that government funding is, is a difficult one. Um, and uh, we've, you know, my, my colleague and, and I have been spending a lot of time talking to business owners about, um, you know, different ways to access uh, government funding and trying to uh, find other ways to, to manage your cash over that period. And that's where we've been using the cash flow forecasting tool that I talked about earlier on in the session as a really important way of managing, I guess, the cash you do have available as effectively as you can. Um, so I can see that, yeah, you're obviously in a, in a very difficult position there. Um, and, and I guess I'd, I'd suggest, you, you know, if, if things are really getting tight, it's good to get some expert advice as soon as you can. Um, and certainly, um, you know, I guess as part of that advice, I, I wouldn't say it's the only thing you need to do, but, um, you know, if you've got an accountant or a good financial advisor that can provide some um, guidance to you at this time, then I think that's your first port of call. Um, but certainly if you can take advantage of the group coaching program, I think that'll, that'll help focus your mind on some of the more um, productive things you can do to try and um, try and ensure your business is in the best spot possible. And I've just picked up your latest point there, Rachel. Um, you've been building it up for six months, and then this happened. Yeah, that's uh, that's incredibly painful, and it's been it's been heartbreaking, really, hearing um, hearing a lot of stories like yours. Um, a lot of people just incredibly bad luck. You know, they might have um, started up, you know, just a few months before all this hit. Um, so you haven't been able to build up much of a cash buffer, and um, and it's it's very difficult to manage your way through this. So again, I think as a first port of call, I'd go to an accountant or or, or a trusted advisor there. Um, but also, it may be worth a conversation with the THA just to find out what additional support they may be able to offer you. Because um, there are a number of things, you know, that are either at no cost or at low cost. And one of them is the Tipsy Training Program, um, which could certainly um, uh, certainly be of assistance um, as you try and pull things back together and, and get going again. All right. Um, well, I'll leave it there. I hope everyone's got some value uh, out of the session today and it's given you some things to think about uh, regarding uh, getting your business up and running again. Um, again, I'd encourage you to speak to the THA or contact us directly if you're interested in the group coaching program. And I look forward to keeping in touch with as many of you as possible. Um, as we uh, get the uh, group coaching program going. So thank you very much for your, for your time today um, and best of luck with your businesses. Thanks.